Hello everyone, welcome to a stitch and chat. I'm stitching on once upon a fairy tale. Um, it is the super sized and max colors. Um, and I'm at, yeah, at the first, I found the first shelf here. So you're not going to see too much, but I will kind of put a picture or something up here so you can see the, the design, how it will look when it's finished. Um, and I will start by telling you how I'm working on this project. So I have my part threads on these things, which are called Bobbies, Bobbies. Yeah. And you can find them on Etsy and Amazon. Um, so I work in an area that is 20 so two grids to the side and then by 30 so 30 you know three grids down I work in this area like cross country and then I park the threads under or to the side depending on where where the next stitch is but since I'm finishing this um, part, I'm not gonna continue down, I'm gonna move to the right. So I'll, I'm finishing threads instead. So I'm not gonna park uh, underneath. Um, so yeah, I'm mixing cross country and parking. And what I've learned instead of, you know, picking the first thread, which I did before, the first thread in the top row, which was parked, started stitching that, and then all these threads would be in the way. So that's what a lot of people say when parking, they, you know, they say all that, you know, everything is in the way. But if you lift your threads like this, and you start from the bottom instead, most usually the first first part thread here doesn't have any stitches in this color above it because if if it was like that it would be parked up here so but i know that just because i'm showing you i know that this thread is parked from the side so there might be some other stitches up here but this is how you get around that so if you then pick you know the first thread from the bottom and start stitching down you won't have any threads in your way all right so i'm using pattern keeper so i will mark my thread my part thread here and i will start stitching and i'm working with the color 801 and sometimes i do a full you know cross right away and sometimes I do the Danish method where I just go half stitch. I usually do this when I want to travel stitch. I do like that and then I go back. So since I have my camera, camera just above, you know, um, I should have had the camera a little bit to the left but I'm used to having my hand just on top of where I'm stitching. So I will try to move my hand so you can see what's going on. But if I forget, I'm really sorry. Um, I wish I had a set where, you know, camera and lights, everything was finished. So I could just put my work and just start stitching and I didn't have to change the setup but since, you know, I don't have a stitchy room or anything, I have to move my stuff around and take the stuff down and 
you know bring it back up when it's time to film so it's a little bit different every time so anyway uh, I finished that symbol so now I'm gonna end the thread and where was I was there so I would just go a few stitches to the right and wherever there's room and I finish off with a pin stitch usually I just do half a pin stitch because it's going to be stitched over but since it's further down now and I'm not gonna you know keep on stitching down I'm I'm trying to do a full pin stitch so now I have a needle with a little bit of waist thread which I think is too much to throw away so that's when I bring out my organizing system which Laura Laura Gr has taught us and now it's going to be huge because I'm so zoomed in but I have a box where I have all my part threads and that's where I I will part this this is a homemade organizer um, I will just put in the corner it's homemade this green is you know the things you use to clean with uh, you know uh, and it's glued in a lid and on top I have you know the um, the symbol the key you get with your pattern I glue that on top and then I just uh, park the needle with that thread so I was working with 801 so I'm just gonna park it I will remove this so it's parked there so the next time maybe I just have like one or two stitches in that color and then I just grab that needle and stitch you know it's very fast and simple um, so which thread is next in line and then I have you know I have a needle miter here where I have the needles and sometimes there is one needle and sometimes I've used up a lot of needles from my you know parking or organizer so there could be 10 needles but you know you give and take all the time the next thread in line is this one and that would be which color 3858 Is it the same? I think it's the same. So I have two part threads of the same color. And it is a bit wiggly, you know, but I have my Q snap on a <clears throat> on my Lowry stand. And uh, well, it is what it is. I don't know why it's more stable than some some days it's stable not and then some not so much. So yeah, what day do we have today? Is it Thursday? It's Thursday and it's week 33. It's my last vacation week. Um, and my husband started working this Monday. And Mina, my daughter, she's back to school. She went there Tuesday. You know first day school she was you know picking up her uniform um, meeting her teachers you know the mentor um, getting this the schedule schedule uh, meeting friends and getting some papers for us 
parents to fill in. So it was just uh, it was Wednesday, which were her first, you know, real school day with classes and everything. So, and you know, she was so tired. Oh my God, she's a teenager, you know, and she just wanted to sleep all the time. So I was so afraid of how she was gonna get up, you know. And uh, that's why also it's good that I'm I'm home still. It wasn't planned, but uh, I am. And um, I think I had a lot of anxiety this past weekend. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was uh, tough. And uh, I was wondering that maybe it's because we're going back to, you know, normal. Everyone starts to work again, back to school, you know. Um, I'm so worried that it's going to be a tough year for her and that affects, you know, the whole family, of course. And, you know, I have work and responsibilities as well and problems there, which, which luckily, since I'm not the boss anymore, it's not my problem to solve, but, you know, I can't just ignore the problem. So I, I'm worried as well. And yeah, I was, uh, I didn't know <clears throat> if I was going to be able to film anything at all. Um, but after the first days she has gotten home from, from school, she has been full of energy. She's been happy and laughing and smiling. And I think this has to do a lot because she's meeting her friends, you know. Um, last year they were home a lot, you know. School was from home and So that gave me a little bit of peace at heart. So it doesn't feel so bad anymore, but yeah, now I need to worry for myself. You know, I need to get out of bed on Monday early and uh, I don't know how I'm going to do that. So. so the stitch I just made there was, you know, the same uh, color as the other ones I just stitched. And instead of ending the thread, I see that this color that I was stitching with is going to be stitched with in the next area where I'm going to stitch later on. And there are no other uh, threads of this color part. So I'm going to park it here to the right instead. So the next color, I'm just going to mark there. The next color will be 327. This is also a bit strangely parked, I think, because it's coming from the left. Yeah, sometimes I wish I could be like a stay-at-home mom. Now, in, in the age she's in, you know, she's... You know, from when she turned maybe like 12, when they started getting grades in school. Uh, and, you know, the four, five to four coming years to, you know, support her during this tough time in school. To prepare, you know, for other, you know, when you, I don't know if it's high school next, but... For us, it's it's called the gymnasium, and there, you know, 
the choice you make there will affect the rest of your life. And the better grades you have, the better, you know, choice you can make. And, well, you know, you need to help after school and make sure she gets good nutrition and, you know, take them to training. Make sure that she goes to her dance class and everything. Yeah, so sometimes I wish. I feel this is the age where we need to support our kids. Seriously, I, I believe that. I rather work and I'm going to sound like a horrible mother, but I rather work and leave my kid in the kindergarten when she's young than leaving her to herself now when she's a teenager. I'd rather be home with her now to guide her, to be with her, to support her, you know? I know a lot of people don't agree with me, but I would rather, if I could choose, I would have spent my, you know... In Sweden, we get, uh, like, parent days. We have quite a few days but for me uh, if you don't work or anything uh, I stayed at home for a year I would rather have that time now but okay um, we're all different where am I going I'm going here but you know st stay at home parent you you it's not a normal thing in Sweden. I, I find it very hard. I don't know how you can possibly do that unless, you know, your partner who's working makes quite a lot of money. And uh, I don't believe it's a good choice to make considering you know, when it's time to retire, when you're 65, 67 years, the income you get then is based on what you have earned during your years, you know, and if you have been a stay-at-home mom for 20 years, you know, you can do the maths, it's not going to be that much. Um, and it doesn't matter how much your husband has earned then. Anyway, let's not go into that kind of politics. Let's stitch and have fun. Um, mm -hmm -hmm. Sometimes I feel like I need to do... I think I've said this before. I need to do a stitch along. I have so many things to talk about. And then I turn on the camera and I have nothing to talk about. <laughs> oh... Vacation time. What have I been up to? Stitching and just enjoying the community and everything that's going on and watching lots and lots of floss tube and just being in my stitchy bubble. Now I'm just stitching all over the place. So don't don't mind me. I'm just I'm not sticking to my <laughs> my organized plan to stitch. I need another needle to do the pin stitch. And then I have I have a little tin which I bought from Etsy from um, ah now I, I don't remember the name. It's a it's a Lithuanian store. So and I have you know bought lots of needles have it in there and this is the 28 size I have in the blue box tin I think it's called tin okay and I hate it when the needle is squeaking Ugh. I hate it I usually have my earphones um, because you know 
my husband is sitting behind me and you know he's watching his movies and playing his games and talking with his friends and um, then our daughter is in the sofa watching her TV shows and doing her thing and then I do my thing so I usually have my earphones and then I don't hear the squeaking This one is next. Um, yeah, I, I mentioned I joined the common threaded stitcher. Is it a challenge? I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't call it a challenge. It's a prompt, prompt thing, prompt event on Instagram where you're gonna, you know, get something like the first day was like take a picture of yourself and introduce yourself um i haven't so we're on day 19 today um i haven't done all the days because some things i don't know i don't know how to to sh to show it or um yeah like one that was like you know share a, a recipe and i'm like well should i share a swedish re recipe i mean how many of you would understand that and i don't have any english recipe so i didn't you know put anything out there and that was like which is uh yeah you know like new floss tubers you i've been watching so i did join i did mentioned too but at the same time i like but i have watched more and i feel bad for not calling every single one out you know so now yeah i'm stitching upwards but that's not usually how i do it it's just because i'm i'm ending threads here or just parking it to the right you know i usually don't do that so ignore everything i'm doing now <laughs> But yesterday, what I wanted to say was yesterday, one, two, three, and four, we were going to post our like a, a pattern, which we, you know, we really want to stitch or have, you know, and it was such a great variety. It was so nice to see which unicorn pattern someone had, you know. Um, some were hates and many of them, you know, still, you know, easy to get, but, you know, they are costly to start. Uh, some, there were a lot of samplers. Uh, some were mirabilias and some of the out of prints, of course. Um, and uh, there was I posted my primitive uh, needle the Salem remembered chart which I'm like oh, I really want to have that and I yeah I don't know why I really really want it so bad because it's just some names and someone told me you know you can chart that out yourself you know you don't have to have a paper pattern for that and i i agree i could just you know get a font and write the names down and do a border but it's just something you know with that a stephanie in just keep stitching she says there's two parts of cross stitching there's the stitching and then there's the collecting it's two very different things and i have to agree and it's just, you know, the hunt for it and wanting it. And yeah, there's one out on eBay for $300. I don't want to pay $300 for that, you know. I'm saying like 100 bucks, fine. But three, no. That's just too much. So now all the threads are going to be in my way, but... Um, there 
there are like four stitches left to do here on this in this color I will just try to make it work uh, but yeah it was very much fun to to go through the hashtag on Instagram and see everyone's unicorn patterns um, and there was one lady she posted uh, a picture of some fishermen and I was like I recognize that one you know and yeah I went and read about it and she told she said it was the Eva Rosenstand strand uh, it's a um, is it Swedish or Danish? Eva I would say it's Swedish, but I know the store was in Denmark. Um, and I remember this fisherman piece so well because my grandmother uh, stitched the series and they it was three huge, you know, comparing to a supersized it's not huge but you know if you think of the way they were stitching back then you know in the 80s in the 90s and I remember she had brought these three finished pieces home from the framer and she had put it up on the wall in her living room and she was so proud I didn't understand then uh, why she was so proud I was like okay it's three pictures of some fishermen you know okay who wants that you know I was not very old then but I understand it now and it was so nice to see that one of them was that lady's unicorn shard and you know Eva I don't I don't even think she that exists anymore you know so it was like, will she ever be able to get that chart? You know, I actually think my grandmother still has those cross stitches on the wall. It would be interesting to ask her actually if she still has the patterns, but I doubt it. I mean, you didn't do photocopies back then. That is not how... You know, my mother and grandmother taught me to stitch. You know, you used the pattern that came with the kit. And you, you know, you didn't use highlighters. I learned how to use, you know, um, a pen. I mean, it's not erasable. <laughs> so it's so different. So, so different. Yeah, but a lot of fun. So I'm going to stitch with 158 and I just have three stitches. So this is, I think this is the way I want, I like to work on my super size with max colors in this area. I do all the part threads first and then I start filling in what's left, you know? Okay, so I need to mark them off and see if there's anyone under, further down. And then we have another part one there. So I'm gonna finish this one or end it with half a pin stitch because I know this area will be okay. What's going on? Will be stitched over. Before I was very careful with securing my threads. You know, I turned it over, I secured it underneath stitches or I pulled up an end, you know, and then stitched when it was stitched over, I cut them off. Mm -hmm. 
but we have a great lady on floss tube called Komari who's stitching this piece and she has stitched a lot of hates one of her first videos she's showing all the pieces she has stitched that's a lot of hates guys she's like she's a superwoman you know <laughs> I have two of the same color parked with this color <laughs> um, but she showed whoops sorry she showed she doesn't start or end threads at all she just leave a tail underneath and she says the tail will be stitched in she has never ever ever had any trouble with that and I'm like if a woman who has stitched so many hates says that I believe it so I've started you know just doing half pin stitches I'm not so careful with that anymore um, so yeah I was thinking of doing maybe a tag like get to know your stitcher tag I think I will do that not today because I don't have the tag with me um, but I th it's one of the tags uh, I know Rachel Ray used it on her stitch with me not too long ago um, so I was thinking of using that one because there are slight questions you know when did you learn to stitch and I think there are some questions about your the floss tube channel and such so it would be nice content I think and you would get to know a little bit about me as a stitcher I think I think you guys know me pretty well if you know uh, if you follow me for a while I think you know my jam a little bit so But yeah, uh, I think it would be fun. I have started watching uh, Stitcherista again because I saw that she had been going back to stitching a little bit more. And I, I just love her very much. I think she's cool, fun, entertaining. She does, yeah, I love the way she talks. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of, there are some people that don't like that she she says the F word a lot and stuff. But she's just free of speech. I like that. Uh, but then I realized that she has like she's diamond painting a lot still. But when she does that, she has like a true crime story and they're not too long and she just does it so well you know with her comments and everything it's a lot of fun so I've been like not watching but listening to her a lot so I can recommend that um, Yeah, I like I like true crime stories. But I don't know where do you get those stories from, you know? I know some people read up on stuff to tell the stories, which is amazing that you take the time.
I think I will just finish those stitches in that color and So, um, I haven't listened, I thought I was going to listen to a lot of audiobooks, but I've been so busy with Flosstube, <laughs> I haven't what, listened to, I, w I listened to one book during my vacation, that's all. But I usually like those, you know, detective, you know, murder stories, uh, and especially... I listen a lot to the Nordic author, Swedish, Norwegian, Danish. So, um, but that's also one question. I'm gonna end this with a pin stitch. A question for the common threaded stitcher on Instagram was, which is your favorite book? So, you know, I love those crime authors. Uh, but the only book I have reread, not listened, I've listened to it too, but reread multiple times, it is The Lord of the Rings. So I would say that is my favorite book. I would say that. I don't know. Do you want it even closer up, more zoomed in, or is this fine? It would be nice to know. Uh, but the closer you get, the more wiggling you get, right? Um, I forgot what I was thinking. This is 553. Five, parked in the wrong place no I think I've stitched wrong here my battery on pattern keeper is going low I need to hook it up I can see that it's because I'm talking and everything I miscalculated but it, it, this is like rock stone it's not nobody's gonna be able to tell so I'm just gonna fudge it you won't see any difference I swear to god so all the grays are are wrong no it's just those ones there that are wrong Okay, so how will I do this? I will just put another one there. And up here. Sometimes I find it that. Oh, if you can hear the sound in the background now, that's my dog, Maya. She is dreaming. She's a loud dreamer. Yeah. And uh, yeah, sometimes I find it that these gray lines, like the gray line here, I, I can't hardly see it. It disappears for me. So sometimes it's difficult to follow those lines. So because of the situation around the world, we decided not to go anywhere this summer. 
Um, we still wanted to be careful. Um, my husband isn't fully fa uh, vaccinated yet, and we haven't started offering vaccination for kids under 16, so my daughter isn't vaccinated either. Uh, so we decided to stay home and um, instead we decided, you know, you know, we live in a three room apartment and yeah, I have a lot of stash with all my hobbies and everything. And my husband too has, he loves uh, photography and he has a lot of camera stuff everywhere. And we have fishes and my daughter has her stuff, but she has her own room. But anyway, so we don't have a lot of space. That means we have a lot of stuff out. And We, uh, we decided to clear out our balcony, the attic, the attic, attic, I think it's called attic, and our, the do uh, Mina's room, our daughter's room. So we have spent some time doing that and it's, I like that. I like to do that when I have vacation. It's so nice, you know. Just throw stuff, give away stuff, stuff like that. Yeah, and then on my birthday, I bought some cake and invited the family. Um, we're not a big family. We're just like 10 people. But my, my older sister, she was sick, so we asked her and her husband and kids to. They had to stay home, of course, because it was COVID symptoms and you never know. Uh, but so we were just a few people and had a cake and just sat and talked. So that was really nice. Um, and my mom and... My grandmother wasn't here, she lives in another city, uh, but my grandmother and my mom and my young sister gave me some money and I bought a, a new lamp, the one I'm using now. I've always wanted one of these. It's, it's like a round lead lamp with a... Um, magnifying glass in it I've always wanted one of those so I bought a lamp uh, for my birthday money I'm just trying to figure out where I put that put it in the wrong place, didn't I? I did. Um, and then I also got for that money, um, I think if you have seen on my floss tub behind me, I have some plastic bins where I have my memorabilia stash. Um, I bought a couple of more of those bins. And uh, as I mentioned on my last floss tube, my husband gave me <clears throat> a ring light for my birthday. Um, 
and I've gotten positive feedback from you guys that it's the lighting is good so that's really nice um, I don't what was I going to say yeah and my last floss tube I filmed with my new phone and it was mirrored and I have no idea why that happened and I have no idea how you change it so we'll see if that continues to happen We'll see and then <laughs> oh my god um, yesterday I was filming my mirabilia stash which is in three parts oh my god uh, but it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun and then when I you know opened the, f the files in my editing program which is Premiere Pro I could not you know the, the camera had filmed and this was my old phone I filmed with and it had filmed like in a po portrait way you know so you know the the film was like this thin and I wanted to, you know, turn the film like this. I have done this before. It has never, ever been any kind of trouble whatsoever. But today or yesterday, that was not going to happen. I, I turned the movie, but it was still like the thin one. So you only could see a small part of the film. And I was sitting all day. You know cutting and because i was showing the stuff you know up to the left of the phone in the camera like this and i had to cut and move the picture you know back and forth so you could see everything and i was like oh my god this is like a full-time job editing this and i didn't want to refilm because i like that um when when I film a lot of stuff, you know, just, you know, come and I don't know, uh, I don't like to have a script, really. I just like to, to, to talk as it comes. Like now, I'm just blabbering, whatever. It just, I'm, I'm talking to whatever comes to my mind. Anyway, and it was a bit frustrating and I was like, well, fine, it will just be like this you know <clears throat> you can see whatever <clears throat> I'm showing and I've cut everything now so and I was just about to finish the first film when Mina came home from school and I told her about it and now I'm s I need to be careful here there's one there two there one two and three and one up and I told her about it and I was like it's so frustrating I don't understand you know it has worked for two years and all of a sudden I switch phone and now it doesn't work what's wrong and she was like well I have an app where you can do that change I'm like well if I can't change it in the phone and if I can't change it in you know this expensive editing program how can a free app do the thing I want and she is like well I don't know but I can do it and I said well I don't believe it I don't think it's gonna work and she said well give me the phone get the app I will show you so I did I got the app I put in the video and she showed me how and she could flip the film <laughs> 
And I was like, I've been sitting with this all day and you, you're you telling me it was just like that simple. And she was like, yeah. Yeah, so I was very happy and very thankful. So I just had to re-edit everything and upload everything again on YouTube. But now it turned out the way I wanted it, so everything's fine. <laughs> but I do feel sometimes that, yeah, I'm not young anymore. I'm getting, you know, older and the technique is like going too fast ahead and I might not have that interest to make myself understand everything, you know? So yeah, I've become the person who just, you know, sometimes hands over the phone to my daughter and said, please help me. <laughs> so yeah. It's not like what it used to be. And I've asked my younger sister, she's nine years younger than me, and she's uh, a gamer, she's uh, streaming. Um, and I asked her, you know, if, because again, it's like the technique, language, you know, the terms, and it's in English, and I have a very hard time getting my head around that. And I need to do that if I want to send live on Flosstube, Floss you know, on YouTube. And I would like to try that. Um, so I asked her, you know, how could you maybe show me and explain to me? And if I need some equipment, I will, you know, I can get that. That's no problem. So she said she she's going to you know, help me. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at that some someday. She's not, you know, the person who says, let's do it now. And I'm not the kind of person who does that either. And I'm going back to work and I know myself when I, <laughs> when I go back to work. Even if it feels now like it's not gonna be any trouble, I'm gonna do plenty of floss tubes and I'm going to work and I'm going to help my daughter and I'm going to do the things with my husband, you know, spend time with him and everything. I know. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen that way. All right. And now what now? I pulled it. I can pull it down here. But yeah, that would be nice to do the live. Oh, talking about that. Uh, I joined, I don't know, do you guys watch uh, This Is Stitcher on FlossTube? It's an English man in Australia. Uh, he stitches a lot of full coverage and uh, he seems to be a very nice guy. Uh, he has a Facebook group and he has Zoom me meetings. And that kind of tickled my fancy. Uh, you know, you know, the community and everything. And, you know, I so much want to be a part of the community. Uh, but I'm so scared sometimes. I hate myself for it. But he has Zoom meetings and I haven't joined any yet because I'm just, I've been a little bit busy in, in the weekends, but um, I'm stitching with 38 to 35, by the way. <clears throat> um, but I really want to, you know, find courage and join because it's one thing to be the community and talk in text, but you know, do it with Zoom and stuff is different. And I think 
you know we can find friends stitchy friends very good stitchy friends in that way and I think um, how can I explain it um, I think will bring a lot of joy um, you know I'm just stitching I didn't even count there what's wrong with me <laughs> Jesus it's the wrong place um yeah so I mean that's uh, I've said before, you know, sometimes it feels very lonely. You don't have anyone to talk about the stitching and maybe life. Um, and maybe, you know, the husband or the partner and the child just... Yeah, they get tired of you sometimes you know when you're they don't understand it when you're like maybe the new mirabilia release and you're like oh my god look at that face and look at those flowers and oh you're gonna beat all that and they're there they will just look at you and okay <laughs> good for you <laughs> the same thing with my husband when he starts talking about his cameras i'm like oh okay well, whatever you say, I have no idea what everything means. That all the numbers and whatever, whatever. I don't know, but I'm listening, of course. But it's not the same if he would tell it to someone who knew what he was talking about, right? So the same thing with cross stitching. So yeah, and. <laughs> And, and then, you know, getting into the community through floss tube is amazing. It, it's so difficult to explain the joy that brings when, when you get that connection with people, with other people who likes, who loves what you love, you know, it's just, it's very special. So I think like doing it in a Zoom regularly would be so even better you know but even if I'm the kind of person who likes a challenge and put myself in situations sometimes just you know for the sake of the challenge and for growing I sometimes do regret it I'm like what have I gotten myself into why did I do this but I'm the I'm I'm like that. I just, yeah. I, I just do stuff sometimes. And but but this with the Sue meeting, I'm very like, ugh. Do I have to talk? Do I have to speak English? Is everyone gonna look at me and listen to me? And what if I don't do it good enough? Or what if I don't understand them? You know, not all English, English, you know, accents and dialect. It's not always that easy. What if I don't understand the joke? I know Darren has said, you know, there's a lot of laughs and stuff. I'm like, what if I don't understand it? Because sometimes jokes in another language is difficult you know but I really want to join but at the same time I'm scared as you know F blank <laughs> so yeah I don't know I will just continue to the right I think I will just go with the flow and I need to count now so I'm not getting way off one, two, one, two, and three, and four. One, two, and three. Yeah. Um. I was thinking.
thinking of something else I wanted to talk about. Hmm. I don't remember. Why do I forget it? the wrong position. I'm in the wrong position again. Ah. Ow. Now I stabbed myself. Jesus. It's just you want to make it fast and smooth and everything and then you start doing silly stuff. Yeah, I started watching uh, Outlander again. I just love that series. talking about Outlander I was I okay how can I go from Outlander to 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 Sharky Stitcher I don't know but I'm doing that jump I found Sharky Stitcher on FlossTube because she's stitching a lot of Mirabilias, Bella Filipina and Chatelaines and she loves beats and she is the kind of person who has, you know, the free of speech, uh, no filter, and I just love her. Um, and yeah, so she's showing a lot of Chatelaines and she's talking a lot about Chatelaines. So, you know, it triggered. I have a lot of Chatelaines, but you know. You can never have enough. Don't worry. I haven't bought it. Well, never mind. Um, and, you know, she was talking about the Serengeti Mandela. And I started, you know, take a closer look at it. And it is so freaking beautiful. So, so beautiful. I'm not like, why haven't I seen this one before? <laughs> That's like what I say about all the heaven and earth designs I buy. Why haven't I seen this one before? Add to cart. <laughs> well, um, anyway, uh, so I was looking at it, you know, and then, yeah, it's beautiful. I want that one, but, uh, I then got back to like which one do I really want next in line and that has always been I've always wanted the White Knights in St. Petersburg I find it so beautiful and powerful I don't know how to describe magnificent you know um, How I'm gonna try to this is going to be a long video by the way just so you know um, ah come on pin stitch yes no um, yes a beautiful shadowing white knights and why I find it extra 
it's per it's pretty expensive so that's one of them i haven't ordered but you know when i was uh, a teenager i watched a movie called white knights which is about this ballet dancer and it's he's called michael brugnikov or something like that and i was so fascinated by him and his dancing and he well he tickles my fancy too <laughs> kind of you know um th- you know the the one he plays but anyway it, it, it's the ballet it's so beautiful and it's in russia it's it, it's hard to exp- explain but that chatelaine brings up those kind of memories from that time and it's just um, i like it a lot um but to bring it back to outlander and i started watching outlander again and i'm like oh you know i need to stitch everything that is outlander related and you know i have the alpine mandala which is the fraser's hill you know um So then I was started thinking, well, I would really like to stitch the Scottish mandala instead because Outlander, you know, and my husband preferred the Scottish mandala f- over this this the white knights. And the Scottish mandala has different buildings, you know, um and cute animals. It's just I don't really love the center too much on the crop pictures. I mean in real life it might look just stunning. I don't know. So I was thinking that, you know, I need to stitch the Scottish mandala because of You know, guys, I get tired of myself sometimes. I never stitch this much. wrong and i don't know why my nose gets like this when i'm doing floss tubes um it's up here right yeah So, but I think I'm back to white knights. I need that chatelaine. I need the chatelaine. And talking about chatelaine, I actually bought the framed Russian window one. There is only one window. So, unfortunately, I guess she passed away before she got to do any more of those designs. But um it's so cool. and it's a small design and i was thinking well there's not so many beads let's just kit this thing up myself and i'm telling you i will never ever do that again ever the threads were like fine i could get them um casa senina thank god for that shop have most of the stuff. I have to wait a month or two to get it, but hey. I have things to do. But the beads. The beads were very very difficult to find. I found maybe a place that had one crystal and then there was another place who had two crystals and then one place had some of the delicate beads and another place had some of the other delicate beads and I'm like okay and at the same time i felt very uncertain if i was looking at the right crystals because they didn't have like a number like 
for example, DMC, you know it's DMC number 310. It's black. so the crystals just had like a name light I don't know if it's if it's light peach or if it's light peacock because they have cut the name off uh, yeah no that was uh, not easy I could have asked on the website but I wanted really to try myself and I think the delicate beads I think I've got right I found a store in Holland thank god it's in Europe uh, that had delicate beads with the numbers which was in the material list so I hope it is the right color because in the material list on the delicate beads it doesn't say which color range it is just a number and I didn't find the delicate beads with that number anywhere else and they shipped very fast so that was very nice really nice but they didn't have the crystals and I searched and searched and sh again I didn't know if I was in the right color ranges or anything but I found a place on Etsy who had all the three crystals that I wanted and I think it's the correct colors so I ordered that and when it was sent out I realized they're sending it from India yeah yeah I hope it will arrive soon or it's not that I, I'm in a hurry but yeah I don't know but that's the first time and the last time I'm kidding up a shadow line myself. Yep. I won't do it again. You know, I can do it with the threads. Absolutely. But with the beads and crystals? Mm -mm. So maybe, you know, get the bead pack from either Hawkins or the European Cross uh, Stitch Company. I'm getting a headache too that's not good because I don't have any migraine medicine at home so during our vacation we've been watching we, which means especially me and my husband has been working, watching a lot of movies together which has been pretty nice because usually yeah you know I'm stitching and he's playing his games so a little bit of time together and you know I have a great fear of sharks because you know and water because there's sharks in the water and just a few years ago I learned that there are no sharks in the swimming pool I know it sounds funny but that's my fear and I learned to cope with it by putting on you know these swimming glasses and look underneath the water I learned to be underwater and it's okay it's not dangerous to be underwater because then I could see everything underwater so that fe felt very safe, even in deep water. I was very fine with that. Um, so, but my fear for open water is still there. And it's a lot because in my mind, there are white sharks there. I don't want to go by boat or anything. I hate water. Um, and I'm very fearful yeah let's just put it at that and it is because I watched the movie Jaws when I was too young I watched it many times 
and it has scared the hell out of me. I'm stitching with 160, by the way. And my husband and my daughter has been watching scary movies. And one evening, I was still sitting and stitching while they were watching these scary movies. And when they were done, he turned on Jaws. I don't know why, but he did. And I couldn't stop watching. It was a bit scary. Uh, especially like in the beginning when, you know, they are out swimming in open wa water and, you know, the children are, oh, yeah. However. When they go out by boat to get the shark, the shark, I'm watching. And watching it, I'm like, I know it's not a real shark. So you have to try to see this from like my perspective. I mean, I know it's not real. But anyway, when they went out with the boat and are trying to catch the shark and the shark is starting to attack the boat and stuff, I'm like, okay, this is just silly. It looks silly. I know sharks don't do that. Um, yes, you have to respect the animal. They can be dangerous, but I mean, no, 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 no. And it felt so good to sit and watch the movie and yeah you got a little jump scare every now and then but it, it was a relief it was a real true relief and I'm very very happy about that because I've been so scared you know, just hearing the, the music. Uh, yeah, I, I, so <clears throat> it's difficult to explain, but now I need to get in the water. Yeah, but I want some glasses for, so I can, I need to see what's underneath. Yeah. So now my daughter wants to watch The Meg. She has seen it before. I have never seen it, seen it, but she wants to watch it with me. And I was like, okay, we're going to watch The Meg. So in the near future, I'm going to watch The Meg with her. And I know this is like a monster shark or something that is attacking something. I don't know. Slow stitching. Oh, I already had one of those parts, so I will. Uh, I need to find it on my organizer. So I showed you my part or part system, and I use these organizers where I have, you know, the main threads on. I thought I was gonna go through all the part threads today, but unless you want to sit here all day with me, I'm not gonna make that. Um, so this coming autumn or fall, um, I do have a few new starts planned. It is less than I planned to begin with, but I have three, 
full coverage pieces. Now I just need to make sure I'm in the right spot here. Um, two Heaven and Earths and one Gecko Rouge. And <clears throat> I've been thinking a lot about um, so this is where is this where I made the mistake? No. Let's see. Here. There. It shouldn't be there. Should I put it there? Let's put no, because that's where the stars are going. Let's put one here. Yeah, I need a rotation where I feel like I get to stitch all the things and give you content which you want to watch on floss dupe and I um First, I was thinking because I want to stitch more Mirabilia and Chatelaine because I was just stitching on them once, you know, on Fridays. So I was stitching on my Mirabilia once every second Friday and the Chatelaine every second Friday. And I want more progress on them because when the Mirabilia is finished, I start a new mirror. And same thing with the Chatelaine. So I don't want, want multiple mirrors going or anything and so I wanted more time for them but then yeah I'm just gonna end this thread here um, so I was thinking well Let's do a bookshelf week because I like that idea. I have five bookshelves I'm stitching on. And then let's do a mirror week and then a shadow lane week. And then we do a spin the wheel where I have all my full coverage pieces, right? That sounded like, yeah, that's cool. And then every Friday I will stitch on another, you know, I have plenty of kits which are not full coverage, it's not Mirabilia or anything. I have all the other stuffs and I want to stitch that too. So I was thinking and then I can, you know, spin the wheel once a month and that thing I will stitch on Fridays for a month. I like that idea. I thought that sounded like a lot of fun. And then I start thinking. But if I'm going to have a bookshelf week, once a month, that will mean that because Once Upon a Fairy Tale is my absolute favorite whip at the moment. I want to stitch on it almost all the time. And I have the cell I started with Cat, the amazing animals, and I seriously want to stitch the animals. And then I was thinking, well, if I'm going to have a, a rotation like that, that will mean that I will stitch on my Once Upon a Fairy Tale every fifth month. That means I will get to it twice a year. And that's too little. I was like, no, I don't want that. I want to stitch on it a lot more often. So then I was thinking instead of a bookshelf week, I will have, you know, the cell 
Animal Kingdom and the Once Upon a Fairy Tale. And I will switch them. So every second month I stitch on the animals and every second month I stitch on Once Upon a Fairy Tale. Not as often as I would like, but you know, um, at least it will be more often than twice a year. And then the other bookshelves will just have to go on the wheel. Right? So that would be Once Upon a Fairy Tale or Animal Kingdom, Mira, Chatelaine, and then a full coverage wheel. And every Friday, one of the kids, right? So I'm just gonna figure this out because this is where I made the mistake. So it's it looks weird. And how was I thinking then? I still felt it was not enough with Once Upon a Fairy Tale. I was a little bit uncertain, but I kind of like that idea. And maybe once, you know, where you reach, I reach my goal for this piece, I want to finish this part because then I can move the Q snap and then I'm in a completely new area and maybe I don't I won't feel that need to stitch on it all the time <clears throat> it's you know it's when you're getting close to a goal you want to continue uh, so then I was watching um, yeah, and I get it, you know, I feel bad because sometimes, you know, you guys who are watching wants to see more of something certain, some uh, some special whip or something. And I understand that. I That's the same thing I feel when I watch Floss Tube, right? And then I feel so bad for not stitching on that because I want to stitch on something else or my rotation is different, you know? So I'm battling with that. It feel, it makes me feel like I'm not enough. It's, don't, you know, don't, don't worry about it, but it's just me how I feel. And I know that feeling from especially work. Um, and I know where that will bring me. You know, I know how it will make me feel in the end. Uh, so then I was watching Sandy S Sandra from Sweden. She's a Swedish floss tuber. She does floss tube in English. Um, I watched her latest floss tube and she had a huge update. Um, she, she has been a while away for a while. She has just gotten a, a little kid so that has taken up her time of course um, but she had yeah no then I was thinking before I watched her floss tube I was like well the rotation has doesn't have to be four weeks you know I can do a five week rotation so then I was thinking what was I thinking? I was thinking The Amazing Animal, one week, Mira, one week, <clears throat> then Once Upon a Fairy Tale, one week, and then Chatelaine, one week, and then we spin the wheel, one week, for my full coverage pieces. And then every Friday, I stitch on the kids. And I felt this is something I can work with, for sure. Um, I like that. I will cover everything I want to stitch on. So I felt that was pretty nice. But then I watched Sandy and she had a eight or nine week rotation on different stuffs. And I was like, well, and she had a focus piece, which she stitched every second week. So you know, she, so for example, let's say that Once Upon a Fairy Tale is my focus piece. I would stitch on that 
one week and then I do Mira and then I go back to the Once Upon a Fairy Tale and then I do Shadowland and then I go back to it and then I do the Amazing Animals, you know, to get a lot of pro progress on that one whip. I like that a lot. So I'm battling between that or the five week rotation. And yeah, I'm asking you guys, what, what would you prefer? I'm not saying that I will go with what everyone wants, but I would like to hear what you think, what you would prefer, or yeah, what sounds like most fun floss tube wise, you know? And I'm not going to do challenges. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna not do that. Um, it's getting too much. And sometimes when I watch floss tubers who's, who's saying, yeah, I stitch on what I want for as long as I want. And then I switch the project. And for them, you know, it's, important you know the, the stitching you know to enjoy that and sometimes I know we say that well it's not fun for you guys who's, who are watching to just see one project if you're not doing it like like Needle Ninja or Kamari it's a different kind of floss tube you know I don't know uh, I don't know <laughs> really I don't know but I'm in some place where I feel I need to do something to get around everything without getting burnt out and without feeling bad, you know, for not, uh, you know, for not stitching on all the things. So, I don't know, should I continue stitching around this color? Yeah, let's do that. Let's keep going. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. Oh, we've been at it for one and a half hours. But I felt I needed this time to just speak my mind and let my thoughts come. Am I in the wrong place, place again? Um, I totally understand if you don't want to sit and listen to me for that long. Uh, but uh, I appreciate everyone who who's tuning in every time I release a video, not if, even if you just do it sometimes. It's very much appreciated. Um, and all your comments and sweet words is... Yeah, you, you, you are all my, you know, stitchy family. So it's very, it's nice. One, two, three. I'm way under the bookshelf now. I'm not supposed to be down here stitching. Um, 
one and two and then we have three three one one two and three one two and three and that is you know this is why I don't like cross country stitching. I understand this is a lot faster. But every time I have to make a choice, which way should I stitch? Should I go that way or should I go that way? Which is the closest? Which is the furthest? You know, can I jump that far or should I end? All those questions need, which needs to be answered. I don't like that. That's why I like parking so much more. And you keep that system. For me that I don't I don't have to make those choices. I just st stitch. And rarely when I do a 10 by 10 grid and just parking, you know, the normal way. I rarely do mistakes. In this way it's a lot more mistakes for me. And there and up there, and this is completely wrong. So I did two there, I went up, I went over, and then I need to go up there. So that means when I'm doing my extreme cross country stitches, I'm not going to do a stitch in chat. <laughs> yeah, and I think I could get one more stitch on this thread. Yeah, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you for sticking around and listening to me. As I said, I, I needed that. Um, I do have a lot of anxiety building up, going back to normal with stress and daily routines and everything. And yeah, life, you know. Um, so um, I hope you enjoyed um, I will do more stitch alongs uh, or stitch and stitch with me videos with some music in the background um, and um, I hope you liked my Mirabilia uh, three part stash um, yeah, I love cross stitching. I hope you love it too. Everyone, please take care, stay safe, and uh, talk to you soon. Bye, bye.